notebooks on Observable can be reused in different ways. If you need only very specific parts, like a single function or a dataset, you can import them piecemeal into another notebook so you don't have to recreate or copy the code in different places. If you want to base your notebook on an existing one, or you want to try out some ideas and perhaps send back suggestions to the original author, you can fork a notebook. A big strength of notebooks is that they make it easy to write components once and then reuse them in other places. This is done using the import keyword. You could write it by hand, but it's much easier to simply copy it from a cell using the cell menu. This also has the advantage of being less error prone. I've imported the letter frequency chart here from the notebook that I used in the previous video. It depends on the data set and three variables that pick the letter to highlight, as well as the colors of the selected and regular bars. The import brings all of those necessary values with it. If you don't like the name of the cell in the original notebook, perhaps because it has a generic name such as data, or because you already have a cell of the same name in your existing notebook, you can rename it directly in the import statement. I can now call this function using my new name. To import multiple cells from the same notebook, add the names into the same import statement separated by commas. You might also notice a lock symbol on top of a cell that contains an import from another notebook. This allows you to lock the version of the notebook that the cell is imported from. Locking the version ensures that you get the exact cell that you expected, but it also means that you will not get any updates that are made to it. In addition to importing from other notebooks, you can also import general JavaScript modules. Observable already includes many useful libraries such as D3, Plot, Lodash, and more, but you might want to use one that isn't available by default. There is no single standard for JavaScript modules, which can make importing a challenge at times. We have a helpful import debugger to help with this though. Many external modules are easy to import, however, such as this library of financial functions that we're using in our mortgage calculator. Imports are often moved to the end of a notebook or an appendix since Observable's reactive data flow means that the order of the cells doesn't matter. A different way of reusing a notebook and a way to collaborate is to fork a notebook. This is done by selecting the fork option from the menu in the top right of any notebook. The term forking comes from version control systems and essentially just means making a copy of a document, but that copy knows where it came from. A forked notebook works just like any completely independent copy, but because it knows which parent notebook it was derived from, it has some additional functionality. And that includes the ability to make suggestions. A good model for testing out ideas is to fork a notebook, test the ideas in the fork, and then use the suggest feature to send the changes back to the original author. If you're familiar with Git or other distributed version control systems, you might recognize this as a pull request. The owner of the original notebook can then inspect the changes and decide whether to accept the suggestion and merge the changes into their own version or ignore them. But it's also just a great way to start your work from an existing example that you like, perhaps something you found on Observable's Explore page. This marks the end of our Learning Observable course. If you want to learn more, check out the tutorials and documentation on the Observable website, and also, of course, the notebooks linked from the descriptions of all of these videos. And come join us on the Observable Community Forums and the Observable Community Slack workspace.